are you ready for Game Changer? Every game is different and every game changes. Today, our contestant will spin the wheel to see what game she will be playing. Welcome our contestant, Layla! Layla, tell us something about yourself. What's up everyone, my name is Layla and I am a black belt in Taekwondo. <laughs> <laughs> I'm also the three-time Loudest Laugher World Champion. Already a winner. <laughs> Let's see if you can continue that winning streak here on Game Changer. It is now time to spin the Game Changer wheel. Layla, are you ready? Let me hear you say, spin that wheel. Spin, spin that wheel! wheel! This game is one of a slime, and here is how it works. We have three jars of slime with a one-of-a-kind object in each one. You will have 60 seconds to stick your arms in each jar and try to discover what that object is. If you guess all three, you are heading to the bonus round. But there is only one right answer. And if you guess wrong, You'll be one of a slime. Uh, hold up, I have to stick my arms in here. Glad you understand the game. Here we go. Audience, count down with me. Three, two, one, go! Oh, uh, this is nastier than putting lotion on my Aunt Nancy's feet. But um, I think it is uh, a Captain Eureka action figure. You are correct. Better hurry on to the next okay. one. Wait, this can't be what I think it is. It's, uh, I've never wanted to be wrong and slimed more in my life. Um, do you have Uncle Leonard's dentures in here? Wow, you are correct! Oh, ew! She never did get that popcorn kernel out. Last one. Let's see if she can do it. Oh, oh, this is tough. Um, but I think it is a arcade token. All right. This is a one-of-a-kind object, so I'll need you to be more specific. Well, it is obviously from the Fox Arcade. More specific? What year? Uh, uh, that's tough. Um, the 81 run had four whiskers on the Fox, but the 82 had five because of the stamp defect. Um, five, four, three, two... 81! The token is from 81, 1981. You are correct, and you have unlocked the bonus round. All of those items were pretty unique. Here at Game Changer, we are discovering how God has made each one of us special and unique. So much so that he wants each of us to have a relationship with him. So stick around, you will not want to miss what's coming up next. Some days, I feel a little bit off. It could be my serve is off, or maybe I just had a fight with a friend, and I just feel like I'm not enough. And what I sometimes believe from the people around me, or even my own thoughts, is that I'm just not that special. But then I remember what the Bible tells me. The Bible is God's true message to us about himself. In the Bible, God says that each of us were made by God, and we are special to him. God designed us with a purpose and a way to have a relationship with him. Now, I don't know about you, but that sounds like a special connection to me. The God who makes the world spin and knows the stars by name has invited us to be a part of his family, to be children of God. Let's open the Bible to the book of 1 John. 1 John is in the New Testament. Let's see what 1 John tells us about what it means to be children of God. Children of God. 1 John 2 through 3. Jesus' close friend John wrote a letter to Christians. He called Christians little children because all Christians are children of God. John said that when we are part of God's family, we keep God's commands. Being a child of God is like living in light instead of in darkness. John wrote, if someone doesn't love his brother or sister, he is in the darkness. If someone loves his brother or sister, he is in the light. John wasn't talking about loving your actual brother or sister. He was talking about loving others who are part of God's big family of people who know and trust in Jesus. John also wrote, 
See what great love the Father has given us, that we should be called God's children. And we are. Did you hear that? I want to read this verse one more time. 1 John 3, 1 says, See what great love the Father has given us, that we should be called God's children. And we are. The Bible says that God has such big and amazing love for each of us that he calls us his own children. That changes things. Let's see what John says next. People who are God's children live in a different way than people who are not God's children. They do what is right and they love each other. John's message was not new. Jesus told his followers to love one another. John wrote that other people would know we are Christians because we show love to one another. So how do we know what love is? We look at Jesus. He showed us love by giving his life for us. Jesus gives us power to love like that too. John said, when we have something that our brother or sister needs, we should give it to him or her. If someone has enough to help but turns away and does nothing, does that person really know God's love? We must not just talk about loving others. We must love them by our actions and by telling them the truth. Little children, John said, let us not just say that we love others. Let's show our love by what we do. Being a part of God's family really changes things. It changes how I think about myself and the people around me. And it even changes why I do what I do. Trusting and believing in Jesus and being part of God's family means everything about me changes. Not just how I think about myself, but also how I live and what I do. God shows us his amazing love by inviting us into his family. But we don't deserve this love. In fact, we have all chosen to do what we think is best instead of following what God knows is best. That is called sin. And sin separates us from God. But God showed us his love by sending his son, Jesus, to take the punishment that we deserve for our sin so that we can have a relationship with God. When we turn away from our sin, believe and trust in Jesus and ask God to forgive us, he does. When we choose to follow God, we are adopted into his family. He says that we are special and loved, but it doesn't end there. Our lives are transformed when we become a part of his family and we begin to act like God. We start to help the people who need it. We tell the truth because we want to do what's right. And we even love the people who aren't always kind to us. We will never be perfect, but God will always love us. That is the special love that God gives to us. And we can go out and give it to others. So if you have moments where you think that you aren't special, remember that God loves you and wants you to be a part of his amazing family. And that is pretty special. When we look at the world and the people around us on any given day, we can see pain, suffering, and sadness everywhere. Something just seems off or broken, doesn't it? There's a reason things seem this way. In the beginning, God created everything, on purpose, for a purpose, including you. And everything God made was perfect and good. God made people special. The Bible says God made us in his image. This means that who we are is supposed to reflect to other people who God is. So how did we get from here, God's perfect design, to here, brokenness? Well, we ran away. Adam and Eve, the first people God made, turned against God by looking somewhere else for their identity, purpose, and truth. They broke God's rule and chose their way instead of following God's way. This is called sin. Sin is choosing my own way and disobeying God. And sin messes everything up. It messes up God's original design, bringing brokenness, sickness, pain, and suffering into our world. And most importantly, it messes up our relationship with God and our relationships with one another. Sadly today, our world is broken and we don't live how God designed us to live. Many people try to fix this brokenness on their own, trying to get good grades, be a good person, or get lots of followers and likes on social media. 
But all of those things don't really work. They pull us back into this identity of brokenness. We can't do it on our own. Instead, we live in shame and guilt and fear. But God had a plan to make you new again and fix what was broken by sin. God loves you and he never wanted you or me to live in this brokenness. God's plan was to send his only son, Jesus, for us. Even though he was God's own son, Jesus gave up everything that was rightfully his. He came to earth as a man and lived life perfectly. He completely trusted and depended on God and was obedient to him in every way. Jesus lived a perfect life, suffered and died on a cross to take the punishment that we deserved for our sin. Then to show that Jesus truly was God's son, he rose back to life again, showing his power over death and all brokenness. So how do we get back to God's good design? Admit to God that he is in charge and you are not. Tell God that you're sorry for trying to take his place and repent, which means to turn away from your sin. Next, believe in Jesus by faith, that he really is God's son and that he came and died the death that you deserve for your sin and rose again to restore your relationship with God. And then confess your faith in Jesus Christ as savior and Lord of everything. When you confess your faith in Jesus, you willingly choose to give over your identity your plans, your everything to him, and let God be the good king of your life. When God restores our relationship to him, we begin to discover our true identity and meaning and purpose for our life. Even while still in a broken world, we are able to pursue God's plan in every area of our lives. The truth is, we'll still fall and fail from time to time. But when we do, we know that our relationship with God has been restored and God will lead us. The Holy Spirit gives us the power to pursue his design and gives us confidence that he is always with us now and forever.
Hello everyone, it's Game Changer Day. Today we are learning how God's plan really changes the game. Let's open the Bible and see what it says about God's perfect plan. John 3.16 says, For God loved the world in this way. He gave His one and only Son, so that everyone who believes in Him will not perish but have eternal life. This verse tells us that God loves us a lot. In fact, He loves us so much that He sent His Son, Jesus, so that we could believe and know God forever. How amazing is that? Let's all stand to our feet and learn this verse together. Here we go. First, I'll say part of the verse. Then you can repeat after me. For God loved the world in this way. For God loved the world in this way. He gave his one and only son. He gave his one and only son. So that everyone who believes in him. So that everyone who believes in him. Will not perish, but have eternal life. Will not perish, but have eternal life. John 3.16 John 3.16 Fantastic job! Give yourselves a high five! God created a perfect world, but our sin messed it up. And now the world and people are broken. That's not how God wanted it to be. God made us for a relationship with Him. But our sin breaks that relationship with God and messes everything up. But there's good news! Jesus came to earth to fix the relationship that was broken by sin. God's plan was to send his only son, Jesus, so we could follow God and be part of his family. Let's spin the game changer wheel to see what fun way we can say the verse. On the count of three, say, spin that wheel. One, two, three. Spin, spin that, that wheel! wheel! Let me hear you repeat it after me, but this time like a coach giving a pep talk. For God loved the world in this way. For God loved the world in this way. He gave his one and only son. He gave his one and only son. So that everyone who believes in him. So that everyone who believes in him. Will not perish, but have eternal life. Will not perish, but have eternal life. John 3.16 John 3.16 You are all fantastic. Let's all say it one more time together to be sure that we don't forget. One, two, three. For God loved the world in this way. He gave His one and only Son so that everyone who believes in Him will not perish but have eternal life. John 316. God loves us so much and wants to fix our brokenness. When we respond to God by believing in Him, God promises that we can have an unbroken relationship with Him. Now that is a game changer. We'll see you next time.